Uh, you always gave me the role of the bad guy, my dear John. So, as usual, I try to do my best. First, this is a patient, a real one. John, what would you do in this patient? Radical or partial nephrectomy? You're edging me into some little trap here that I'm not going to allow myself to go into. So uh, I, I think I need to see more details. Okay, so in this situation, you have two options to perform a partial nephrectomy or a radical nephrectomy. If you listen to, my, to the previous speaker, you would have done this, a partial nephrectomy. Another case, John. In this guy, would you, would you do a partial nephrectomy? Memjeu. I think that these two patients have T1B disease. The first one, it's not so difficult to perform a partial nephrectomy. In this one, it's much more challenging when we look at the other kidney that is normal. So, is really partial nephrectomy a standard in T1B? I don't know. And the question raised now by the guidelines is, if a partial nephrectomy could be done safely for a renal tumor, would radical nephrectomy be considered malpractice? Yes, but you have to focus on one word in this question, is safely. That's the problem. Is there any evidence that partial nephrectomy do better than radical in T1BRCC? There are some papers about retrospective studies about historical series, but we don't have real evidence about this. When you look at this paper, a uh, fantastic paper, look at the second author, uh, that has been published recently in uh, European Urology, there are all the details about the expanding role of partial nephrectomy. But when you look at real life, it's a little bit different. In this paper published in the Journal of Urology in August, you see that uh, in uh, more than 120,000 20, patients with stage one, they look at what happened to these patients in terms of surgical procedures. And you see that in 2007, almost 60% of this patient T1 had a radical nephrectomy. And when you look at the size, you see that in patients who have a T1B tumor, only 17.2% are the partial nephrectomy, which means that the increasing rate of uh, nephron sparing surgery per year is 0 0.9 in this category. The EORTC study that was uh, run by Hein van Poppel, the chairman of uh, the previous speaker, uh, it showed that uh, in patients who have partial nephrectomy versus radical nephrectomy, it seemed that there is no much more complication in partial than in radical. But when you look in details, you see that in this series, there is only 38 patients versus 49 that are indeed T1B patients. So there is no possible conclusion. And by the way, this is the only series where there is a comparison between the survival looking at the uh, kidney function, and there is no difference. And this is the only prospective randomized phase three study. Does the stage have an impact on oncological results and complications in uh, partial nephrectomy? Here you see this paper published by Patar in 2007, and you see that when you have a bigger tumor, you have more complications. Is it, a, is it a big surprise? When you look at the positive margin, the local recurrence, metastasis, death, and cancer base, there is no so much more difference, which means that from an oncological point of view, there is may probably no difference. So the question is not the oncological issue. The question is the safety for the patient during the procedure and after it. When you look to this paper, I'm not interested in the comparison of minimally invasive or not minimally invasive. I'm interested in the fact, the fact that they had a partial nephrectomy. And you, when you see that, you see that out of uh, 2,290 patients who had a nephrectomy, including 
280 T1B cortical tumors, cortical tumors, this is important, but it's only 12.2% of the series. And out of these patients, 230 were PT1B, 48 were PT3A. And when you look at the results, you have to be aware that when you perform this kind of surgery, whatever it is in open or minimally invasive, you have a significant complication rate between 20 to 33 percent, with a significant number of grade three or more complications, with a blood loss that may be significant, with a high transfusion rate up to 15 percent. And the clamping duration in this series is quite high. I know that you have to be aware that in minimally invasive, it's only warm ischemia time. In the open surgery, some of them had uh, cooling. And you see that it's necessary to clamp the artery in more than 93% in minimally invasive and more than 80% in open surgery, which reflect that, in fact, in 20% of the case in open surgery, if you don't have to clamp the artery, it means that the tumor is located in a very favorable position. Impact of the safety margin, 71 patients, CT1B and 0M0, published uh, in 2006 in a journal of urology, 42% out of PT1A, 44% PT1B, 13% PT3A. And they all had a simple enucleation. When you look at the five-year cancer-specific survival, you see that uh, it is as usual, but you have a little bit more local recurrences in partial nephrectomy, and 10 patients progressed. So the conclusion of this presentation is that there is no evidence that nephron sparing surgery do better than radical nephrectomy. Nephron sparing surgery in T1B and T2 is sometimes possible, mainly depending on the location of the tumor, patient's characteristics, and surgeon's experience. In stage T1, partial nephrectomy is not the new standard. It is an option as radical nephrectomy. And it should be a case-by-case -case choice involving the patient in the choice of the strategy. John, for this patient. You see, what when you see this patient, he has a normal control lateral kidney with only a small cyst and a T1B located in the middle of the kidney. In this situation, it's possible to perform a partial nephrectomy. It's not an easy one, but it's possible. So what is important? What is important is to have a discussion with the patient, to have a good evaluation of the patient, and we heard yesterday that the uh, nutritional aspect is important, and also in lo localized disease, and it's also very important to have a common decision between the surgeon and the patient. If this patient is ready to walk on the moon, he's a very good candidate for a partial nephrectomy. If he's afraid when you see a mouse, then he's a better candidate for a radical nephrectomy. Well, what is the future? There is now a study going on, in a, at least in our country, with these uh, a prospective phase two study to see if it's possible to reduce the size of the tumor by giving to the patient uh, axitinib before radical nephrectomy. So maybe this uh, protocol will give you some answer and uh, increase the role of partial nephrectomy in T1B tumors. Thank you.